government today that focuses on oppression, that closes the oldest Christian church and puts the pastors in jail. We are an innovative people, recognizing that our history is intertwined into liberty and justice and freedom. America's values are your values, and don't give up because we will not give up. Call us terrorists, call us freedom fighters. We will not be daunted by words. We are ready to fight for freedom. that all women must have equal rights. As a member of the House Judiciary Committee, I join with her in an independent, separate court system that is not influenced by the religious community to give an unfair justice in terms of whatever religion you are. If they don't like it, you don't get justice. We want a system that is pure, that respects all religions. As I said to you, we started this journey with a number of my friends here some very long time ago. In addition to the floor speeches, many of you know that I've called and called our leaders when we were fighting to be able to remove the MEK off of the terrorist list. We wrote letters. We talked to the Secretary of State. We filed lawsuits uh, that we supported. And of course, I remember in dealing with the early stages of Camp Ashraf, talking to the special envoy two and three and four in the morning, not because I'm a member of the United States Congress, but because it was right, my heart was there, you deserve it, and we have to stand like that no matter what time we are all on the stand. For you, but I'm mostly here for the children. As I went down this row and shook hands, tears were in my eyes to be able to see the children. Because it is my promise, as my colleagues promise you today, that one, I know that as we leave for Washington, we will be calling in a loud voice, as we have done in the resolution that I have supported, along with the author. We will be calling on the safe passage of those in Camp Liberty to go where they can be replaced. You are from all over the world, from Europe, from the United States, South and Central America, and places beyond. You have the ability to come and bring these people safely to you. You should not be denied. But yet, the children should not be discouraged that if they're in Camp Liberty and move to Camp Ashraf, that they are not the inheritors of the real Iran and the real liberty. They must be able to go to Iran and lead that government safely and securely. I am here for the children. So on behalf of the United States Congress, we are here to support a democracy movement in Iran. We support the organized resistance by women, students, youth, and other sectors of this society, but we support the Iranian resistance and we step away from claims of extremism, for that is not the case. We will call for international pressure, including diplomatic, military, and oil sanctions on all of those who will get in your way. We will call on the leadership of Iraq to own up to what is right and what is just. Let them hear our voices. We have sacrificed the ultimate sacrifice of young men and women of the United States of America in the battle. We want Iraq to live up to its promise and free the people of Camp Liberty and let them live in freedom and justice, go back to Ashraf and to be able to be free.
and were able to rise in the sun with Dr. Martin Luther King, who understood that it is all about America's values. It is, in fact, to be able to recount for you in my final words that when he sat in a jail in Birmingham, he wrote a letter to those who accused him of being an agitator who should go away. And this is my final entry and challenge to you. And it is one that I take home in my heart. He said these simple words, injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. If there is injustice in Camp Ashraf, the world must stand with you. And as they stand with you, we shall overcome. We shall Our next speaker.